In this demonstration, we will introduce the new ABAP debugger. This video is intended for those of you who want to change from Classic to the new debugger and use its advantages. We start with the Classic debugger and switch to the new debugger. The new debugger is started in a separated session. The debugger is inactive while the debugger is active. So during debugging, you still see your last screen. Continue F8. The debugger is still available but inactive when the program finished. The debugger is not closed as long as the debugger session is alive. The advantage is that the debugger with all your settings, variables and breakpoints is always available when you restart debugging. Slash HX is the debugger session and detach the debugger. Now we set the new debugger to our default debugger and restart the debugging. You may want to consider this debugger setting. If you switch on this setting, then the debugger will be closed automatically after pressing F8 and the end of the roll area. This is more or less the behavior of the classic debugger and in order to make the migration smooth for you, this is the default setting. F8, the program is finished, the debugger is closed. Let's take a look at the layout of the new debugger. The process info contains the session number you attach to, the information if it's exclusive or non-exclusive debug session. In an exclusive debugging session, the work process is exclusively locked for a currently running debugging session. In a non-exclusive debugging session, the work process is not locked, and any debugger action may involve an implicit database commit during the rolling rollout of the debugging context. The control area and the source code information area are mainly the same as you know them from the classic debugger. The new debugger provides 12 desktops in classic debugger realized as patterns. Three user configurable desktops and seven standard desktops which are pre-configured for your needs and cover most debugging activities. The first desktop shows source code above the variable view as you know it from the classic debugger. Now you can comfortably and quickly scroll vertically and horizontally in the source code. On the standard desktop there is state-of-the-art editor, program stack now is combined above and screen stack and variables window with local and global variables. On the structure desktop you look at structure fields and change them. Each desktop maintains the history of already called objects. Tables desktops shows tables. Objects desktop displays objects. There is detailed display to examine strings and simple fields. And there is a data disk explorer to show the nested object structures. There is a break and watch points desktop meant to maintain break and watch points. And there is diff desktop to compare variables. Let's see how you can customize a desktop. You can customize display to full screen or change horizontal or vertical alignment. Desktop consists of the tools. There are standard tools like source code or variable fast display, data objects like tables or structures, or special tools like, for example, diff tools. You can have the representation of the tool on the current desktop. or you can swap current tool. You can maintain up to four tools on the same desktop. You can save layout so it will be used during your next debugging session. Or the good thing is you can undo these changes by stepping back. Let's take a closer look at the tables. Just double click on the table and go to the tables desktop. You can save the table data in the local file by using the standard table services. Or you can use the two specific services and delete the whole content of the table. and you can upload the table data again.
You can use the comfortable context menu of the table and insert the row by using a row as template. Or you can delete rows. You can comfortably scroll vertically and horizontally. Or you can also navigate to the certain table fields. You can also search in the table. Especially to mention is the new state-of-the-art editor with syntax coloring, convenient horizontal and vertical scrolling, and variable quick info. You just hover over the variable and see the variable info and type in the quick info window. Now you can set breakpoints very easy. In the classic debugger, you just click on the line and hopefully it was not a variable. In the new debugger, there is a dedicated area for setting breakpoints. You just click on the column and you set breakpoint, or you delete it. Editor context menu allows to maintain breakpoints, create them, deactivate them, or delete them. New debugger allows analyzing variables on different detail level. While stepping through a code, you just use the quick info to get the value in type. A double click on the variable name shows it in the variable fast display. You can examine technical type and absolute type. Double click again leads to a specialized detail view. Now we are on the object desktop. Here you can examine objects, attributes with their visibility, inheritance, or you can see their used list. You can again double click on attributes in order to navigate to the subcomponents. Just look at the object fields in the Data Explorer. For nested object structures and references, the Data Explorer allows you to dive in into the depth without losing the context of the upper levels. Click on the simple attribute and see it or change the value in the detailed display. Now we set a breakpoint. Breakpoints haven't changed much between Classic and UDebugger. You can set a breakpoint on a BAP command, just set it on SELECT. Or you can set a breakpoint on a method of a class. And you use comfortable F4 help to choose a method. On the breakpoints desktop, you can maintain breakpoints. Delete them, or deactivate them, or change the scope and convert them. In Classic Debugger, you convert all breakpoints only in one step by pressing Save button. In the new debugger, you can convert breakpoints individually. Let's take a look at watch points. Watch points allow to monitor a variable. The debugger will stop after the variable has changed and the additional condition is fulfilled. In the new debugger, you can set a watch point on the internal table. It's a clear advantage since internal tables are heavily used and often difficult to analyze. We set a watch point on the table and don't specify any condition. The debugger will monitor the table and stop as soon as the table changes. Continue F8. The debugger stops at watch point because the table has changed. Let's see how the table has changed. In contrast to the classic debugger, the new debugger creates always a clone of the watch point variable, so the value of old variable is always available. Div2 can be used to be guided to differences between the old and the new value of the table. With the div tool, you can compare two compatible above variables, for example, two tables, objects, stru structures, or strings. Div tool provides differences concerning type and value. Just double click on a hit and the div result lists and our tables are displayed in parallel. On the debugger, navigates to the differences. You see, difference is in price. Continue F8, the program is finished. We detach the debugger with slash HX.